Hey, what's up guys? This is Keegan and today I'll be revealing one of Botswana's secrets that they've been doing really well to keep underground. No, literally, I mean underground. But first, let's start with the basics. The location of Botswana is rather significant. They are literally sitting on buried treasure. First of all, Botswana is located in southern Africa and is about the same size as France, bordered by four other countries. Interesting fact, all four countries meet at the Zimbezi River. This spot is one of the most narrowest of borders. The Zimbezi River was historically used to navigate the African savannas. Botswana's largest city and capital is Gaborum. Located close to the border of South Africa, the country is divided in nine districts. Most of the borders are rivers, such as the Chobe, Limpopo and Sashe rivers. Otherwise, Botswana is openly free. It's the third least densely populated country in Africa. It's basically a haven for safari enthusiasts. Botswana does not have a bunch of open land, but also a bunch of unique land. The country is generally flat, and 70% of the land is dominated by the Kalahari Desert and dry savannas, especially in the west part of the country, whereas the north and the east is generally greener. In the far northwest district, you have one of the most strangest natural phenomena, the Okavanga Delta. However, this is not the largest inland delta. There are two that surpassed it, one in Mali and one in Sudan. Every year, rainwater from Angola comes down and surges into the Okavanga, causing the entire basin to swell up to three times its permanent size between March and June. The entire area becomes a wetland with an abundance of wildlife that flourishes in it. To the east you have the Makadi Gadi Pans, which is a huge salt basin. This forms part of Botswana's salt mines. Talking about mines, Botswana is a large producer in gem diamonds, having five diamond mines. Thanks to mining, it led to Botswana having the fourth largest GDP in Africa. Now with the Okavanga Delta and the Makari Kadi Pans playing such a huge role in Botswana's ecosystem, borders were put around it and it is now protected areas. Botswana has a total of 22 protected areas. According to the 4th World Congress on National Parks and Protected Areas, 45% of Botswana's land is protected. With severe fracking taking place in Botswana within protected areas leads to the question of just how protected are Botswana's species and are current protected areas sufficient? The controversial practice of shale gas extraction by means of hydraulic fracturing or fracking has been applied in the USA for over 17 years now. Fracking is one of the technologies that is very disruptive and yet is being deployed not just in the USA. I mean it's safe to say that that horse is out of the barn and galloping worldwide now. And the full impact it will have is not really understood. However, recently exposed, Botswana had already granted permission to drill for gas across the Kalahari. Coal bed methane gas exploration by using fracking has been taking place for the last two years in parts of Central Kalahari Game Reserve, Chobe and other national parks. Fracking has many faces. Botswana granted the permission for CBM gas, which is the sister to shale gas. The main difference between shale gas and CBM is that the coal bed layer is shallower and closer to the water table. Another big difference is that with CBM gas extraction, the water in the coal layer is pumped up into the surface. In the industry, this is known as produced water and it is claimed that after treatment it's good enough for consumption. When water is extracted from the coal seam like this, it can be expected that the local groundwater levels will drop. This is a serious problem in a country like Botswana, which just like the Karoo is dependent on its groundwater. An abundant number of species are completely dependent on boil water. For example, there are be 30 to 60,000 elephants that roam through this part of Botswana. This is the largest population of elephants left in Africa. Large scale gas extraction will endanger the lives of these great beasts. Now it's an important action by government that an environmental impact assessment 
has to be done before the project can start. However, Steve Bowden is the unconventional gas manager for Sassel who has big plans to drill in Botswana. Steve says they were not required to do an environmental impact assessment by the government of Botswana. It is still unclear whether Sassel has done an environmental impact assessment, although practices are continuing. One of the big things with coal bed methane is it produces water. Government wants to supply produced water to communities, however this water is toxic and would kill you if you drank any quantity of it. Produced water is poisonous. Looking at Botswana, it is still a developing country. So if you bring gas companies that have destroyed land in the USA, what about Botswana? The long term results for Botswana may be devastating. Now the major risks and concerns of fracking are contamination of groundwater, methane pollution and its impact on climate change, air pollution impacts, exposure to toxic chemicals, blowouts due to gas explosions, water disposal, large volume of water use in water deficient regions, fracking induced earthquakes, workplace safety, as well as infrastructure degradation. With fracking specifically being practiced within protected areas, Botswana's endemic species face the most pressure. The disturbance that fracking places on land increases the likelihood of soil erosion and subsequent loadings to recovering waters of solids and associated chemicals. Cleaning, grading and excavating land to create pad support. The drilling equipment forces species to migrate. A great number of wild pads does not just increase the potential for sediment erosion but also leaves animals and species limited space to linger. Significant impact upon endemic species and endangered animals is noted. In addition to the loss of habitat, other potential direct impacts may include loss of genetic diversity, species isolation, population declines and an increase in invasive species. A map I have compiled in Mark Sand displays 13 endemic species in Botswana's protected areas. For these 13 endemic species in Botswana, the protection target of 50% of the range is fulfilled for 9 species. With this generated reserve network, the target of 50% protection was not met for 3 species. The second map I've created from 13 endemic species in Botswana, the new conservation system would allow the protection of 50% ranges for 11 species.